This week on Make It, Webby Awards founder and filmmaker Tiffany Schlain is here to encourage us all to think about big ideas and the essence of character. <laughs> Tiffany, thank you so much for joining me here today on Make It. It's really awesome to uh, to have you here. So we're going to talk a bit about movies and filmmaking, something that you're Good. very intimately like <laughs> intimately involved with. But I wanted to kind of take it back to really where, if someone Google's your name, one of the first things they're going to see are the Webby Awards yes. and how you started the Webby Awards. And I was really interested. How did you come up with this concept at all? Because it began really at a period in the interwebs when it yes. was still very, very new. Very young. This is too very young. Baby. Yes. Well, I um, to go even further back, I was super into computers. I had an Apple IIe. So this is in the 80s before the web. Right. 1200 baud, yes. 300 baud, something And I like would that. connect yeah. with the modem to the library. No yes. one was on. No one else was there except the librarians. But I thought this is the coolest thing ever. Right. And in high school with another student, we co-wrote this proposal called Uniting the Nations in Telecommunications and Software. And the concept was that kids from enemy countries would connect over their modem and their computers and world peace would happen. And then shortly after college, the way that I would pay for my films is I worked in CD-ROMs, which do you remember oh, that era? I, I made CD-ROMs <laughs> okay. too. I used to do audio mastering for CD-ROMs. CD -ROM, yeah. Back in the day. That's right. And I was working on a CD-ROM about Sting, who was huge at yeah. the time. And someone said to me, you have to see this thing called the web. There are people in different countries talking about how much they love Sting's music and they're connecting over it. And I was like, the web? This is what I was hoping for. I was like, this is going to change the world. And, and this then, is like mid, late 90s? This was early yeah. 90s. Early 90s, OK. I came yeah. back to San Francisco. I worked for the web magazine, which was okay. way ahead of its time. <laughs> right. And they were like, we own the Webby Awards Word brand name, but we haven't done anything with it, and we have no budget. And I was like, I'm an independent filmmaker. I know how to do things with no budget, and I'm obsessed with the web. I want to completely rethink what an award show about this this new technology could be. Right. You know, it was such a young medium. We were trying to hold up, this is the best. Now go further next year. Right. So every year we got to what we felt like was trying to raise raise where it could go, right. honor the best, and then kind of push it forward. Well, and what's interesting, too, is that, and you, and you said this, and this is a thread, I think, that runs throughout all of your works, is that you were really trying to show the incredibly positive potential yeah. of this of this medium. Ultimately, I know all of these technologies can be used for good and, and bad. <laughs> right. If you look at the trajectory of history, we are, I do believe we're moving forward. And that is, I think a lot of times we need to be reminded of that. Right. Um, and a lot of my films and projects try to look at a bigger picture and ground it in the past and try to look at the long view. So there's definitely something rooted in the knowledge and the history of what came before that comes across in what you say and in every film you make. And mm. I, I think that's, it's a unique quality, but it's also, it's what, it's what has made your success so, so global, mm. is that anyone from anywhere can really identify with this. The dream moments mm -hmm. are when we're able to take something so complicated and thorny right. and distill it down right. to a sentence that everyone will relate to, but is attached to the, the gravitas of what that idea is. Right. And we, we make a lot of films about science and technology and history, mm -hmm. and really try to take what is complicated mm -hmm. and distill it down. Because I want to reach the widest possible audience. Right. My goal is to have the widest possible audience wrestle with big ideas. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I really, and to make it global, universal, right authentic humor, because right. a lot of yes. documentaries Absolutely. are very dry, make it fun, right. <laughs> goes down easier if you're talking about big topics, yes. um, but really make you think and really make you feel changed afterwards. Yeah. So so we do, you do the Webby Awards. Did the Webbies. You, 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 you survive the, 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 the rise and fall of the industry and everything else, <laughs> yeah. and now you want to go back into film. I had made a film when I was running the Webby Awards that was about the importance of reproductive choice, and um, Bush uh, George W. Bush had just come into power and he had cut off international family planning and it really pissed me off and it was the first thing that happened in my life where I felt very politically like I wanted to do something. Charged, yeah. So I was running the Webbies and I approached Planned Parenthood. I said I want to make a short film that has history, that has humor, that engages my generation on the importance of reproductive choice. And they're like, okay, go for it. You try to do that. <laughs> right. So right. I made this film while I'm running the Webbies and we did all these web activist tools around it and it got into Sundance. And I just like a light bulb went off. Right. And then the film continued to play without me. So where the right. Webbies, I had to be there every year. 
and right. recreate and even put more energy every year. And then if you weren't at the Webby's that night, you didn't experience That's it. That's right. With this short film called right. Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness, to this day it still right. plays. Yes. And it doesn't need my creative energy. Right. And it was this big moment of like, if I can scale myself, I can go have children now. Because mm -hmm. I want to work less and have a bigger impact. Right. So now you started with uh, your first, your, your for-profit movie studio. Yeah, that was the Moxie Institute. Right. And we made a film called The Tribe. All my films have discussion kits. Yes. And that kind of goes back to, I was growing up, we used to always go to the movies every week and use films as a way to talk about big ideas. So my films come with like. Mm -hmm. We're looking at some of these here. I know. I was like, because I have just as I put just as much love and creativity as these kits as the film, because to me the film is the appetizer, and then the discussion you have afterwards is the main course. So, this is actually for a feature documentary I had called Connected, but it's got you know DVD, it's got discussion cards, it's got a little book, and all of my the films. Packaging is super dope looking as well. It's all like from like it's really made awesome, in California. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really beautiful. Thank you. So we, we made a lot. So we were making um, these films with discussion kits about issues that we felt were important at our time. So I was very interested in experimenting with both how we make a film right. and how we can make it collaboratively through the cloud of the internet right. and people's cell phones. Because th that was the other exciting development right. was people could record on their cell phones. Right. So it's almost like a call and response on a global sure, scale. Yeah. So that kind of launched into, OK, now that was making a film differently. Let's let's launch it differently. Because I've had right. films at Sundance and in theaters and all these different ways. Sure, the traditional festival circuit. Exactly, right. but what would it look like if we just gave the film away for free right. and let people do their own events? So Get we, it in front of more eyes. Yeah, right. and also let them put their own creativity around their premiere. So we'll right. give you a film, we'll give you a poster, we'll give you a discussion kit. So I'd get all the funding, because normally we would sell this. That's how, you know, we've right. done all these different funding okay, models yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we raised all this money and we said, let's get the science of character, which is like the neuroscience and social science around character development, right. out far and wide. So we made a short film and we um, offered it up and then we would unite all the screenings over a global Q&A through the internet. So the first year we were expecting 250 screenings to happen and there was 1,500. Right. The next year there was 6,700. And our third year for Character Day, that's what we called right. it, yep. there was 90, over 92,000 screenings in like, I don't know, over 60 it's a crazy countries. amount of countries. Yeah, and, and so they're all having their own events. Some are 1,000 people, some are 300, universities, companies, schools. And then we say, tune in, and we're going to bring the best speakers on this topic right. to a global Q&A. So it kind of blew up the whole idea of a, a theater Q&A, too. Right. Because everyone can tune in. Well, and Character Day, I wanted to talk about uh, a little bit about that, too. So um, now, again, you're going on your third third year. Well, we, yeah, we, we just, we're, actually, I'm sorry, we're about to start our fourth, fourth year. Fourth year, sorry, okay. September 13th. Yes, September 13th. Now, when you talk about characters, it's, and it's about character development, but you even have, like, a periodic table, yes. right? Because it's actually about the essence of character. Yes. This wonderful um, visionary psychologist named Martin Seligman basically looked at all cultures and all history and looked at the commonalities of between what they value. Right. And as humans. As humans. Right. <laughs> and what are the virtues they all have in common. Right. So he identified 24 character strengths like curiosity, creativity, uh, social intelligence, all of these, right. and put them in a chart of 24 character strengths that lead to virtues. Right. Virtues like wisdom and transit, right. like all these things that you want for your life. And as soon as I saw it broken down, it was it was exciting to me because they're building blocks for working on yourself. But not just in a self-help way, way, but really to be better for your family, your community, the right. world. So it, I loved the scientific nature of it, and I wanted to share this research as far and wide as possible. So. The poster is a periodic table of character strengths. <laughs> right. We made a film, The Science of Character. Then we That's made right. a Jewish version of the film called The Making of a Mensch. That's Jewish. right, yeah. Then we made uh, The Adaptable Mind. And then this year, we have a new film coming out for it uh, called 30,000 30, Days. Yeah, 30,000 Days, right. And it's all about the history of asking questions around meaning and purpose. What's so unique about this is, like you said, you've got people in their homes. Yes, wherever they are. With, wherever people are together. Wherever they are. Where Don't they try to get them right. to a theater. Like, right. when you have a film in theaters, when I had connected in theaters, I went on a press tour, and all I'm doing is I'm doing all these press interviews saying, go to the theater, right? And especially today, getting people to a theater is even harder now that they've got Netflix and right. all these comforts at home. Right, right. But now I'm saying, don't go anywhere. You're already gathered at your school, company. Let's bring it to you where the change needs to happen. Right. 
Tiffany, it's been such a pleasure having you. Oh, oh my God, really. Thank so you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank and again, you for having me. Oh, no. Pleasure is mine. You can find out more about Tiffany and watch her films at letitripple.org. Again, be sure to tune in to Make It every week where we showcase incredible creatives telling their stories, the highs, the lows, and everything in between, <laughs> being self-deprecating about it, having a laugh, and again, trying to inspire and better the world. So again, Tiffany, thank you so much. Thank you for All right, having we'll me. see you again, and we will see you again right here on Make It next time. Thank you.